Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here with Master Effects Training. Now in this video, I wanna show you a really simple brush effect. Uh, I actually demonstrated this at Adobe Max and it, I call it the universal particle brush because it, it has so many different uses. And I'm just gonna show you a couple here and I'd love for you to experiment and try different things with it. But it's a very simple brush to create from scratch and then use it to create a variety of different effects. So let's go ahead and um, jump right in. And I'm gonna create a new document here and I want to make it a square formatted document. So let's just go ahead and make it, um, make it 1300 by 1300 pixels. There we go. So the background is black. Uh, go ahead and make it black if it isn't already. Just if you have a white background, just press command or control I to invert it. Then uh, press D to make sure your colors are in the default black and white. Then go to the filter menu and go to noise and choose add noise. And in here, you're going to max out the amount of noise. Uh, Gaussian and monochromatic are checked on and go ahead and click OK. Next thing is you're going to go here and do a blur. So go to the filter menu and go to blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to do about a five pixel blur, I think in this case, that will be fine. And once you do the blur, now bring up, bring up your levels by pressing Command or Control L. And I'm going to really boost the contrast here. We want to create, in fact, this is the way I used to create snow um, not too long ago. You'll notice that I, so the tighter I get the contrast, the more it looks like particle elements, like it, like it looks like snow in a sense. And if you go a little bit more in either direction, you can get more or less of the effect, depending on which way you want to go. I'm going to go right about there, I think. And I think that looks pretty good. So go ahead and click OK. Now in the past, this is where I would take this layer, bring it into an image, blend it using um, like multiple or screen blend mode rather to create this kind of snow effect. And oftentimes I would put a motion blur on it to create rain. Simple enough. However, it still looked like it was on um, on a plane and on the scene here. It just didn't have any depth to it. So I thought, what if we just um, what if I decided to make this a brush? So as we know, brushes in Photoshop are, are defined as the darker areas being the most opaque. Lighter areas, like gray areas, have some transparency, and white is completely uh, transparent. Knowing that, I'm simply going to invert my image here by pressing Command or Control I. So now the particles are dark and grayish, and the background is white. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the gradient tool and get a linear gradient, set my foreground to white and then set the blend mode of the gradient tool to overlay. Now I'm gonna come in from the each side, I'm holding down the shift key and I'm just gonna come in from each side of the um, document and drag the gradients toward the center. And you'll notice the lighter areas get uh, forced to white, whereas the really, really dark dots don't really change much at all. And that's a good thing. We, we, wanna, have, we wanna have a little bit of contrast there. But for the dots that are right up against the edge here, that are, that are solid black, that aren't getting changed, those I am going to go ahead and put it back in normal mode and just do a smaller gradient into the inside there. There we go. We don't want to have any hard edges. We want this, to, this brush to kind of fade in the background here. There we go. Take that one in a little bit. So now we're ready to go ahead and define the brush. So go to the Edit menu. And right down here, define brush preset. And we'll call it particle universal. There we go. So now that brush is defined. Now, if I go and create a new document, in fact, let's go ahead and create a new one, doesn't matter the size. And I just start painting it. Not too bad. It's obviously in the same orientation, so we need to change the behavior of the brush, but the effect itself looks pretty good. So now open up the brush options panel and here's where we're going to really make it go crazy. So in these uh, shape dynamics, I'm going to increase the size jitter to 100. Uh, angle jitter, max that out. Flip X, flip Y. Just add more randomization to it. Try and do a test brush every time you do that. That's actually looking really good. I'm going to um, size the brush down using my bracket key. There we go. Uh, maybe add a little scattering. Both axes, just a little bit there. You get a little preview down there in the bottom. That looks pretty good. 
Now I'm also going to activate transfer. Now here I am going to go ahead and use. Uh, actually, no, I'm not use, going to use pen pressure, but I am going to go ahead and increase the amount of opacity jitter somewhere between 50 and 75. So I get some randomization of the opacity, and that tends to create a sense of depth as I do it. Notice that. Now, if you're using a pressure-sensitive tablet, feel free to go ahead and turn pressure on, and then uh, it'll respond to how light or soft you touch on the tablet. But I'm getting some pretty good depth in there like that, and I think I like that. So I'm, lastly, I'm going to go in here and just increase the spacing just to get a little bit more random there. So that looks like actual snow. There's varying densities of the snow, varying sizes of the flakes and everything like that. That has a more realistic look to it. And all created from a very simple noise background that we created using filters. So let's see, see how it looks in context. So I have a couple of images here. First one is the obvious thing, snow. So if we know what that character or the effect looks like snow, why not use it to add snow to a scene? Let me size this down just a little bit though. And um, on a new layer, we'll start with a very large brush. Increase the brush size. You notice I got it about 2200 there. And if I just paint a little bit here, you'll notice we get some random flakes of snow on the layer. <clears throat> Let me press a little bit harder. And if I go to filter and go to blur, do a very subtle motion blur here. And that just adds a subtle hint of movement. Notice what it does there? A little subtle hint of movement in the snow. And look, that alone looks like it's very realistic. But we're going to go a little bit further. Create another new layer. Let's size the brush down a little bit. And let's just get it to be more smaller. Flakes of snow falling around here. Again, varying. I'm going to get a little bit more dense around the tree branches here. You know, there'd be snow building on these branches, you would assume, if it's snowing this heavily in this area. So just a number of different ways of using it. But this is much better than just doing a simple one layer and blending it with a blend mode. If I turn these two layers off, we can see we've gone from that to that. And we can control the opacity. It's on its own layers. We can determine how much of the effect we want to see. So very cool particle brush. Now, here's another wildly different use for it. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw me post this image here. It's got this, this sword here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And I've got a layer style that I've created already set up. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to this blank layer. And it's a simple inner and outer glow with a hot, uh, kind of a hot glow to it. Now, as I go in here and paint with my particle, actually, I'm going to turn off some, turn off the scattering here a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to dab a few, a couple little times with the, the brush there. And you'll see that we get this almost kind of a spark effect. And that's just a couple of dabs of the brush there. And the only thing I'd, I've changed about the behavior of the brush is I turned off the scattering. Now, if I go in here and do a bit of a warp and just kind of stretch the pixels a little bit, I can get a sort of sense of movement on those spark elements there. I'm going to add another uh, new blank layer, and let's option drag that effect, the layer style, to that new layer. I'm going to size the brush down now, and I'm just going to create a kind of spark effect around the blade here, like it's being pulled out of the heat, just like that, and I'm just building the effect. And that's all, it's just that particle effect with that uh, glowing layer style there. In fact, I'm going to go in here into that, this fire uh, effect I have here, there it is. And again, real quick on how to extract fire from a uh, black background, channels, command click on the red channel, press command J, copy it to a new layer, turn off my background layer, go to the layer menu, go to matting, remove black mat, nicely clean extracted fire. Now I'm just going to use the lasso tool to make a selection around this element here, and let's bring that in here. Oh, we're getting medieval. We've got fire and sparks. And let's put another, yet another layer. And I'm going to option drag the layer style to that layer as well. And maybe add more sparks in here. 
This time, however, I'm going to put a motion blur on it, but then I'm going to do something differently. Um, go to the blur gallery and do a path blur. And here we can send this in a certain direction. And then the blur tools, let's uh, uncenter it, lessen the speed a little bit. And there we have a little bit of a sense of motion there. And then we can just add more static sparks on top of it. But you can see how you can just kind of go nuts with it. But see the universality of this particular brush. It's a simple noise brush that we modified. To, you can use it to cre create snow, of course. Um, spark effects like this if you add layer styles to it. Um, rain, if you want to see rain. Let's, let's, it wouldn't be raining in this scene, but let's go ahead and do it anyway, just so you can see. So... Size the brush down. And in the case of rain, I'd probably go ahead and just really fill the scene in, except around her face, of course. And I'm just brushing the effect in there. And then go into the filter. Go ahead and use that same path blur I just did. And lessen the speed a little bit. And you can have hard or soft rain, depending on what you want to do. The cool thing about the path blur, too, is you can add a second path and actually have it kind of in going in different directions here. You can even bend the path if you want. So you can get pretty creative with um, on the direction things uh, flow in the scene here. And you can see that you're not getting completely uniform direction when you're using the blur. You can actually play with it using the path blur there. But there is... When I, like I said, the universal particle brush, because it has so many different uses. Again, those are just a few, um, but just try and do different things with it. I've added, I've used it to create uh, added dirt particle elements to certain types of composites and such like that. It's just one of those things that, you know, you might find yourself using a lot more often. So, um, again, experiment with it. If you want to find out more about all these kind of cool tricks and more, go and check out uh, my site, MasterFXTraining.com. I'll see you guys next time. I'm Corey Barker. Take care.